Um, now I have the great pleasure to uh, announce my student. <laughs> um, Stefan is a, is a student in our company, um, been with us for almost three years now, and uh, he's a motorcycle enthusiast, he rides planes, he's a musician, he's all around badass, and uh, he's going to tell us about SEO. Have a good one. Thank you, Maya, for this great introduction. Like she's already said, we are going to talk about search engine optimization today. So that's me. I'm Stefan, 28 years old. I am uh, studying right now my computer science, uh, writing my bachelor thesis, and working in, uh, at Book Day. Today we are going to talk about a couple of different things. First of all, we are going to define an initial situation. Then we will talk about the motivation. Why are we to, uh, talking and listening to this talk? And uh, we will define a couple of goals. What do we want to reach today? After that, I want you to know a couple of basics, the words you have to know uh, to understand this um, talk and understand search engine optimization. We will talk about how does Google work. I will explain you a couple of white hat and black hat methods. Uh, we will check out a search engine optimization case study and learn a couple of methods which we can uh, apply on our own own pages. And at the end, I will explain you a couple of problems of the search engine optimization sector. We will do a quick conclusion and then, uh, yeah, we can go out, I guess. So the initial situation, we have a customer web page named beinvalue.de. And uh, there are lots of news uh, relevant for the insurance industry. And this website has lots of stuff we did for search engine optimization back then. But it's lacking a proper search engine optimization strategy. So they applied for the Google News and they got denied as well. Uh, that was no surprise for us. So what is our motivation? We want more clicks on our web page. We want to get a higher ranking because higher ranking means more people go on our page. More people on our page means more revenue from ads and also more subscribers paying us every month. So more revenue for our page is our goal. But this is actually in chicken egg situation because are we getting more clicks because we are on higher, uh, we have a higher ranking on the Google or are we getting a higher ranking in Google because we have lots of clicks? So that's the question. Then uh, I want to explain you our goals today. First of all, I want you to understand the common mistakes everyone does in search engine optimization. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the common mistakes which uh, people does in uh, search engine optimization. And uh, the second is I want you to have a list of stuff you can do on your own home page. So the basics for uh, search engine op optimization, the words you have to know is uh, SEO is obviously search engine optimization. SERP is search engine response pages. This is the pages you get when you search for something on Google. Ranking is your placement in a search engine response page. Backlinks are links from coming from external to my own home page. Paywalls are content where churches may apply. So you have to pay uh, to see the whole content. And keywords are relevant words for the search. So we will talk about how does Google work, and you may probably ask why are we talking about Google and nothing else. The reason for it is pretty simple. 82% of the global, uh, global search and 95% of the search from Germany in 2018 went to Google. And you may probably ask why is there a huge difference between two numbers. The answer is pretty simple, Baidu. But we are not talking about a Chinese search engine today. So uh, let's talk about Google. Before Google can give you any responses, it does three different things. First is crawling. Crawling means Google goes outside to the other pages and gets the content for itself, reduces it up for the indexing. For the crawling, Google uh, parts the internet on three different uh, parts as well. The first is the fresh content. This is the tip of dough. And uh, the idea of the fresh content is Google just goes to these pages on a minutely or an hourly basis, so pretty frequently. Google wants to have some information as soon as possible, like for example, if there is an accident or something happened, uh, Google wants to have it as soon as possible so people can find it. How do I get there, you may probably ask. You don't. Google decides if your page is worthy enough to get into the fresh content. The second part is the main index. This is where the huge bulk of the web pages are. For example, our pages, your pages as well. And main index is also separated in different parts. These parts are differentiating themselves by how frequently they are indexed as well. 
So for example, the most frequented main index is indexed once a day, and some of them are indexed once every two or three months. There is also a possibility for our developers to tell Google, look at me, I have new content on my page, if you don't mind, get me on another index, uh, on another segment, and Google actually does that. I have very good experience with that. How that uh, is done, I will show you later. So if you have a new content, Google just uh, starts indexing your page as soon as possible. And the last part is the supplementary index. This is uh, where the whole static part of the internet is. <coughs> For example, PDF files, which never changes, or static pages, which went live once and never changed since then. So the next thing what Google has to do is uh, indexing of the whole, uh, whole thing, and indexing is nothing else than Google just looks on which page is which, uh, uh, which search term is on which pages. And for example, if we start searching SEO strategy, like here, um, Google just uh, linked to both tables with a logical end and starts searching and says, yeah, okay, the word SEO is on 17, but on uh, pay, um, page 17 there is no strategy, but on 35 and 1,660 there are SEO and strategy, and coincidentally they are next to each other, so both of them are very good candidates for our result. And the last thing Google has to do is actually the reason why we are here today Ranking, Do I, am I going to show 35 first or 1,660 first? For ranking, there are over 200 different um, factors which are influencing how high you are on the Google search page. I will not going to explain every, each of them detailed because we are going to have a couple of examples later anyways. But I want you to still understand how Google decides that. <coughs> First of all, Google has to decide if one of the terms is more important than the other one. For example, if you search for SEO strategy, is SEO more important than the strategy? The second thing is Google has to decide maybe I am going to show the pages with the highest page rank first. That would mean unimportant what we are going to search, the Wikipedia page would be on the top anyways. Google may also decide saying, okay, the pages of the university and state is more important than everything else. That would mean when we search for a sales strategy, we would get the page of European Union. It doesn't have anything to do with SEO, but it has lots of words strategy. So is it maybe the best part? Or Google also can say where the keywords are more important. A page where it occurs 1,000 times, the word SEO strategy is maybe the most important page about SEO strategy in the universe. But this is also prone to keyword stuffing, and keyword stuffing is a search engine method which uh, people used to use, and we are going to talk about these methods. These methods are parted in two, black hat and white hat methods. Black hat methods is actually optimizing the pages for the crawler and for the indexer, and white hat methods are optimizing the pages for the user. Black hat methods, by the way, uh, fun fact, the idea of black hat comes from the Western films where the bad guy is always wearing a black hat. So this, um, this presentation has also an educational mission. This is the reason why I'm going to show you how black hat methods work and what kind of black hat methods are there. But I want to uh, do a small disclaimer, don't use these things. The reason for that is pretty simple. Google is working really hard to deny these methods, and the people who are using them get punished by the Google. So don't use them, and uh, anyways, you would be much better uh, way off if you use the white hat methods. But that being said, let's talk about the black hat methods. First of all is the cloaking. The idea of cloaking is showing Google and showing your users two different pages. Um, this doesn't work anymore that well because Google is not only indexing with his Google bot, he is also indexing with user agents and if the user agent and Google bot are getting two different pages, Google knows you are doing some shady stuff. The second is the doorway pages. Doorway pages is always used together with cloaking. Um, the idea is you have a search engine optimized page. On this page there are lots of links to going to, for example, 100 different casino websites. The idea of, uh, of doorway pages is generating or uh, generating new users for different websites. Keyword stuffing, we already talked about it. Artificially increasing the keyword density is the idea. And uh, since 2012, it doesn't work that well. The reason for that is the Penguin update where Google not only started to look for the keywords, but also the context of the keyword, the words around the keyword. Um, and looking, is this keyword making any sense 
in the sentences. Next thing is the hidden text and links. This is a cat and mouse game. The developers find always new ways to hide text and links on the page, and Google finds new ways to deny them. For example, earlier, people just margined the text out of the page, and Google said, I'm going to index only the viewport. Then uh, the developer said, well, white text on the white page then. And Google said accessibility time, which means Google just checks the size of your text and also the color of your text. Can people read this text? And right now, the best practice is uh, position absoluting your text and creating with a clip rect a rectangular with the edge size of zero. So everything out of this rectangular which doesn't exist doesn't render it. How long this works, I don't know, but it's the best practice right now. The next thing is paid links in Xtramer. Xtramer is a software which does the same thing what paid links can, and paid links are you are paying some shady guy on the internet some money, and he starts pasting your link on the internet on different pages. Then you can also buy expired domains. That means you buy uh, well-placed websites which are expired and paste your own links to get some juicy link juice on your own page. And the next thing you can do is host clustering. It worked between 2011 and 2013 pretty well. The idea is Google always shows you 10 results. Well, you can actually set it up, but if the usually user don't touch that setting, Google always shows 10 results. So earlier, Google showed different results from one single page. And you could just create lots of sub-pages with the same or similar content. And Google said, well, this guy, which is already page rank one, he had lots of different things about this one single topic. And it starts showing you, uh, showing the users all of, the, all of your results. Which means when you created seven sub-pages, you also had the one original. Uh, Google showed eight of your results, and your uh, concurrence, uh, your, your, uh, the other companies had to fight each other for the last two. So you blocked the responses for, your, um, for the other companies. And if anything doesn't, if none of them works, you just can use negative search engine optimization, which means you, you do the um, cold stuff, which I explained right now on your uh, on the other companies and in a very obvious way, so Google thinks they are doing some shady stuff and they get punished by the Google. Or you can just hack their website and do some shady stuff as well. Like I said, don't use them because Google is going to find it out sooner or later. They are working very hard for that. And on the long run, you would be much better when you use the white hat methods. What are the whitehead methods? They respect the Google's terms of service, and uh, they, the goal of the whitehead methods is improving the user experience of your visitors. <coughs> so what can you do for that? Let's check out a case study, and I will show you a couple of things that you can do. But before that, a small disclaimer as well. Search engine optimization is never the work of one single person or person group. It's always a collaboration between the IT, between the marketing, and between the editors. The reason for that is we, people of the IT, makes it possible, the, the, the technical stuff makes it possible. And the marketing people sh must advertise for the web page so people come on the web page. And the editors must create well con uh, really good content so people stay on that and doesn't bounce out directly. Search engine optimization is also piled on on-page and off-page search engine optimization. Off-page search engine optimization is only the backlinks, which uh, who is showing to my own homepage, and uh, you don't have, you can't uh, influence that directly. So that means uh, we are going to focus on on-page search engine optimization today. I am going to pass search engine optimization me uh, measures for uh, on-page on two technical and uh, content bases, and let's start with the technical, the page structure. This is a standard page structure for in a news page. You have your user, the user comes on your start page. From a start page, it can go on different news. From, uh, he can bounce between the news, or he can go on some sub uh, like politics or economics and uh, go from there to the certain news as well. And uh, this is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. This is our... Um, structure. And I don't want to talk about it pretty long. The thing is, this is not optimal. I want you to understand why page structure is important. 
The reason for that is, first of all, Google doesn't crawl only your page, the, the content of your page. Google also starts crawling the page structure and uh, creates its own page structure to understand. And if Googlebot can navigate through your web page, he just says this web page has a bad user experience. And bad user experience is an indicator for bad ranking. The second thing I, uh, is Google also crawls the page structure for link values. Link values are actually the meaning uh, how much this one particular link means internally in my own homepage. Like you here see, you, uh, for as link values, uh, the most important thing for your page is actually your start page. So start page should have the most link values. But in our case, it was so when you search for the page, just got one random article from 2018, and then you got the start page, which indicates Google just didn't understood which page was the most important one. Then the second thing why page structure is pretty important is also the site link generation. The site link generation, uh, the site link is this part, which is extra to, uh, to the uh, regular search, and uh, you want that because it's much bigger, it's on the top of the search link. How do you generate that? As a developer, you can't. Google decides, to, uh, Google decides which links are the most important. So if Google uh, can't pass any proper uh, page structure, Google can't also create any site links. That's the reason why you want a good page structure. Then the URL. Google uses actually the URL to create its own page structure as well. And uh, in that case, we had uh, in January 4,300 unique pages with, uh, with parameters, and using parameters means Google can't create a page structure out of that. The second thing is, uh, so uh, try not to use any parameter URLs which are getting indexed later. The second thing is the keyword position in your own page. Um, with keyword position, I don't mean on right or left, I mean how depth it is. For example, in this uh, particular case, we are searching for the word Altersvorsorge. And this is on the, under D, publication, Favorite, and then year, month, day, and then on the seventh place. You have to think, Google says, if you have a search word pretty below in your page, how far it is from your start page, that means it's pretty far also from your core values of your home page. So try to have it as early as possible. For example, how does NTV does that? Ratgeber on the second place. Süddeutsche, Politik, USA, second place. Tagesschau, Ausland, Trump, second place. Try to have it as early as possible so that Google thinks it's a pretty important thing for your own home page. Uh, that way, I just uh, created also uh, um, improvement for the URL. What you can do is, for example, uh, we didn't need it, that D and publication. You can throw it out. Uh, year, month, and day, you can uh, you can uh, stick it together. So at the end, we had Fawe Hoyer, where our news are, and uh, year, month, and day. And on the third place, we had our uh, search word. This is something you can do. Then uh, using of HTTPS is a pretty straightforward to do it since 2014. It's a, a confirmed signal for better search engine response page uh, ranking. Uh, one thing I can warn you about know, using Cloudflare for HTTPS because uh, earlier, uh, back then, lots of SEO hosts misused Cloudflare for their own uh, link farms. Uh, that way, Google gave some IP penalties for shared hosts. So watch that out if you are using Cloudflare for HTTPS. Then usage of HTML5 elements. Article is uh, you just say Google where the most important part is and Google just, um, Google focuses on the crawling on this article part. That way Google doesn't waste any, um, any resources crawling the rest of the page and comes more often to your page. Um, canonical tag uh, says to Google that you have uh, the same content somewhere else. The canonical tag can also show to itself as well, no problem. Uh, the idea of canonical is if you don't use that and Google finds out that you have duplicate content, it starts punishing you. 
because uh, you stole stuff from other sp other places. But using Canonical uh, actually denies that. But watch out, if you have 95% of your page Canonical, Google just says this page has no value at all. And uh, yeah, start to be, uh, uh, try to be as original as possible in that case. And if you have duplicate content, which is totally okay, use Canonical. Uh, next and pref uh, tags are used for paginations. If you have lots of uh, lists with paginations, uh, people tend to use canonical, and this is actually uh, the most done SEO mistake ever, um, according to Google at least. Um, so if you have paginated list, try to use next, so Google knows this list is uh, going uh, further to the next pages as well. Then uh, the usage of header and footer helps Google, just like the article, to focus on the most important parts. If you don't use it, like we didn't uh, back then, there is this problem of uh, the, the link forms. This is what I uh, told, you to, uh, told you earlier. Um, how does Google see which pages are the most important? B in value is our start page, and business curatorium, media, that, and Stellenmark are some three random stuff in the footer. Since we didn't back then uh, mark them as footer, Google thought uh, two different things in the footer are more important than our start page. So just watch out that, and uh, if you have some stuff like that, fix that. Then the usage of title is also pretty important. Your editors have to think about titles. If they are, for example, too short or too unrelevant, according to Google, Google says I can do it better and creates such things. And this just doesn't look pretty professional. Just watch out for that and uh, warn your editors to give uh, good titles. Yeah, uh, the usage of structured data is actually needed when you want to use Google Snippets. Google Snippets are, for example, if you search for some company on the right side, there is this company, stuff like that. There are lots of lots of different things that you can do with the structured data. A couple of examples for the news pages is, for example, article. If you are using the article uh, snippet, you get uh, such a big um, tiles with images on the top of the page. Or you can use breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, uh, if you are using breadcrumbs, that leads that your URL shows like this and not like a real URL. So you have a breadcrumb, uh, but it doesn't only look pretty, it's also a signal for being on the top of the pages. Page, speech, uh, page speed is also pretty straightforward. Faster pages tend to get on the top of the, page, uh, on the, top of the rank. Uh, since 2000, uh, 2010, it's a ranking factor for desktop, and 2018 is a ranking factor for mobile. And for us developers, there are a couple of tools, for example, page speed insights, it's a, a hosted tool by Google or Google Lighthouse, which is already implemented in our Google Chromes. Um, with both of these tools, you can uh, check out what kind of problems are there on your own page. What can you do to improve your page speed? Usage of Gzip is pretty uh, impressive. How many pages are still not using Gzip? With Gzip, you can uh, comp uh, comp compress the uh, sent text data. For example, your CSS or your HTML tag, uh, HTML tags are uh, compressed and sent that way. Then lazy loading of images, which means the, only the images which are shown right now in the viewport are going to be loaded and everything else is not. For example, in, uh, in our case study, uh, we, when we go on the BEM value, we get 8 to 12, uh, eight to 12 uh, images we can see, but 174 are loaded which means we need 212 kilobytes, but 2.8 uh, megabytes are loaded. That's almost 13 times more data than we need. Unnecessary. Then auto-resizing of images, because editors tend to upload five megapixel images and we show them on 200 pixel tiles. So auto-resize also uh, improves the page speed. And there is a two-polar extension, and uh, you can always uh, think about usage of AMP pages. Um, yeah, these are accelerated mobile pages where you uh, tell the Google a cached, uh, give the Google a cached version of your page, and Google hosts it for you. Usage of Yoast SEO is also a pretty straightforward thing uh, you can do. Um, the reason for that is it has uh, technical and editorial stuff, uh, which helps uh, which helps your, you as a technical perspective, as from a technical perspective, and your editors from 
an editorial perspective like. It can create automatic sitemap XML and also tell Google when there is a new content, like I tell, told uh, before. Uh, but it also has, for example, a readability score, um, or it can tell your um, editors that um, they should use your keywords more often or more or less because it's a dangerous, uh, it has the danger that it's a bit uh, too often about keyword stuffing. Then submit sitemap is that what I told you before. Uh, you can tell Google that you have new stuff on your page. Um, for that, you can just do a get request on, on a uh, certain uh, URL. Uh, there was on February 2018 a maximum frequency what you could do. Right now, they uh, deleted this information from the from their website, and we don't know how often we can do it today. Also, you can uh, manually submit your URLs um, with the your Google URL testing tool, which is on the Search Console. Well, that was the technical stuff we could do. Now we will talk about a bit uh, about the content stuff. First of all, back to start page. You already know this image with uh, lots of back to start page links. After every of your page, you can actually increase the link value of your start page. This is something you should do. Um, then the site quality is also a pretty important thing. You always have to check out how Google sees your page. In, uh, in, uh, from a perspective of quality. And uh, these values are from January. Right now we are on a much better place, but I just took the values from January for the sake of this presentation. On January, 83% of our page was not included in the ind indexation. We had a couple of paginated, uh, lots of paginated links, which, uh, like I said, we had canonical back then, we fixed them. We had over 6,400 forced. The reason for that was uh, saved links, uh, saved search uh, terms, which had no response, and Google expected to have any response, but didn't get that. And we had 150 broken links. This is something you actually have to solve. Broken links is a very bad thing for the uh, sake of the search engine optimization. And we had over 100 pages which couldn't be crawled at all. Crawling errors. Fix them as well. For that, uh, you can go on Search Console. Search Console tells you every problem on uh, every page, so you can go through them and uh, get the information. But so let's stay on the site quality. We had back then uh, 14,000 valid pages. At the beginning, Google just crawled everything and indexed everything, and after that, he started optimizing and said, well, we, I had 26,000, but uh, the 12,000 I had, I don't need that. So I will clear that out. Uh, we had 14,000 valid pages, 27,000 duplicates, uh, we had 18,000 pages uh, marked as no indexed. So you have to think we had more no index pages than we had valid pages. We had 6,000 pages not found, and Google crawled 18,000 pages and said, I'm not going to waste my uh, resources to index them. They were just on hold. And uh, right now, this number is much, much lesser. I think it was something like 2,000 or stuff like that. Uh, so we had much more valid, uh, valid pages, but check these numbers and try to find your problems, fix them, that helps. The tools, a couple of tools, uh, you can use Write. Uh, there are lots of tools out there. Um, they do much or less the same, but use Google Search Console, definitely, because that's the only tool we have which comes from a primary source. Google tells you directly what the problem is, and uh, this is a very valuable. And if you have crawling problems, you can also use Deep Crawl and Screaming Frog, but if you don't have any crawling problems, don't use that, because that's, in my opinion, in my humble opinion at least, waste of money. When Google can crawl your page, then everything is fine. Yeah, the backlink check is also something you should do. Um, on Google Search Console, you can check out which pages it shows to your own page. And uh, in our case, there was this problem that one, uh, uh, one of the most linked uh, pages to our page was an adult uh, entertainment website. And uh, you might ask, why is a um, porn website serving a certain niche showing to our own website. That doesn't make sense. And you can go to Google this above, this is also on Search Console, and tell uh, that certain websites their backlinks is not valid. You don't want them. 
This is also something you should do once a month or maybe more frequently, less frequently, as you as it fits to your own workflow. So let's talk about the problems of search engine optimization then. Um, first of all, search engine optimization is intransparent and it's contradictory. The reason for it is pretty simple. Google doesn't want us to know how Google works in an exact way. And uh, that leads that we get lots of information which are contradictory or not uh, comprehensible at all. I want to give you a good example for that. Spell checking is one of my favorites there. In 2012, Matt Katz, this is a Google worker uh, from, from the USA, uh, got asked in, um, in uh, yeah, he got asked in a webinar if Google is uh, looking for the spell checking on a website. And he said, no, we are not looking for spell checking, but there is a correlation between websites who are on the page top and having a good spell checking. And in 2014, Moz, um, an independent company, found out with their research that Google actually checks out for grammar and spell checking. In 2017, John Muller, a Switzerland Google worker, also got asked the same question, and he answered, no, we are not checking for spell checking or grammar checking. The reason for that is pretty simple. We don't have the technology to find out if people are writing bad English or good Hungarian, for example. And uh, we know that this is uh, not true just because uh, for, uh, he also his argument was we can't find out is the... Uh, the context of the word. But actually in 2012, that was the very technology they, found, uh, they created, reading the context, just uh, working against the keyword stuffing. So very contradictory informations out there and uh, also the informations which we get are very time dependent. Google is updating their search algorithms on a daily or weekly basis. So what you hear today can be unrelevant next week. We don't know. And another problem of the search engine optimization is Black Hat search engine optimization is bad, except Google earns money with that. For example, link farms are absolutely not okay, but if you do Google Ads, uh, over Google AdSense, you get uh, pretty straightforward backlinks to your own page. Or Google uh, top rank, getting on Google top ranking with Black Hat search engine optimization is absolutely not okay. But if you uh, get a Google ad, you are on the Google's top page. It's also fine. And uh, host clustering, like I said, having lots of uh, results on the Google's top page is not okay. But if you do different, uh, different ads, uh, if you buy different ads, you get on the top page with different stuff as well. For example, uh, before Lieferando bought Pizza Day in Germany, there was, uh, if you search for Pizza Day, you got the app of the Lieferando, you got the home page of the Lieferando, the mobile page, and the support of Lieferando. So, this is, this is the problem here, actually. And I just want to get you a small conclusion. Search engine optimization is important, but SEO is not clearly comprehensible. The best practices are not known and should also stay secret. Google is not interested at uh, us knowing that. And my conclusion is just create a good homepage and a high value content and you should be fine. So if you didn't get anything from today, just get these three things. First is develop sales strategies as soon as possible. Search engine optimization is not something you should do at the end. Then for existing projects, create a cost benefit calculation for specific things. For example, us just changing our wall site uh, structure would cost us lots of money and what we get from that is a bit complicated and communicate to your customers that search engine optimization is a lengthy process. If someone promises you getting, uh, getting top rank in one day or one night, uh, he's either lying or he's using Black Hat SEO strategies. So, yeah, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. Okay, well, that was informative. Hi. Um, first of all, to avoid catastrophes, dinner is not at eight, it's at six. <laughs> and uh, Stefan, thank you so much. I would like to quickly remind you, oh, there's a question. You have a question. 
What about the accordions uh, you, you might use on a web page? Are these bad uh, things for, from the SEO perspective? Uh, absolutely not. Well, it depends uh, how you use them. You are hiding them probably with uh, Bootstrap, I guess. Uh, yeah, this is not a problem because Google can actually use JavaScript. Uh, actually, uh, they are pretty good about that since this years of May. So accordions are not a problem at all. They are not a hidden content for Google. They know that it's an accordion. That's fine. Any other questions? No? Okay, so I'd like to quickly remind you to vote for the talk so we can see which talks were the greatest at the end of the, at the, end of the developer days. And um, with that, I would send you off for some coffee and come back for the next talks. If you have any other questions, you can always ask me on Twitter or uh, write uh, an email on my page or so. Thank you. <laughs>